Can we talk about the craft clearance sales a bit? Oh. Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to talk about my Achilles heel when it comes to craft shopping and craft hoarding. Um, as you know, I try to keep things pared down as much as possible. Um, I am someone with a tendency to kind of hoard craft supplies. I'm not like this in other areas of my life, which is kind of weird. I just, but I really love um, creating and everything has potential in the eyes of a crafter. You know, you're in it with me, right? Uh, everything could be something else. Every piece of furniture that's discarded could be revamped and made into something completely beautiful. So it is so tempting to um, always be on the lookout for things that we can alter and look for good deals on our supplies because we go through quite a bit of it. Um, but lately I've caught myself buying some things on clearance that were not the best idea. And um, because stores churn stuff over so quickly, I think there's a lot more clearance sales these days and probably more of us are falling victim to buying some of these things that may not really serve us very well. So what I did was I made some notes on my phone because I knew I would get sidetracked and forget what I was talking about. So um, I, if I'm looking down at my phone, it's just because I wanted to make some notes here. So I could keep this a little more concise than my normal rambly videos. So let's talk about the downsides to shopping these crafty clearance sales. You know, you see them on YouTube. People are sharing what they got at the big box store and 75% off. And you just want to run out and see for yourself what they have because... Heaven forbid you miss something. We don't want to. We don't like to miss out on anything, do we? No, of course not. I I want to get a good deal. I want to have fabulous new craft supplies. We all do. Um, so the thing that is the biggest concern is that you can buy something when it's seventy five percent off. You don't really think whether you're really going to use it again, or whether you really need it, or whether you even really want it. It's almost like you get caught up in the thrill of like. Oh, this is great. This is this was like five dollars. I got it for a dollar twenty-five. I oh, this is awesome. And then you bring it home, and since it was a smaller amount of money that you didn't really think about in advance, you kind of forget that you have it. You forget that you bought it because it's not like you thought about it for a few weeks and considered whether you're going to use it, like you would if you were buying some things at full price. So it just kind of like it gives you a momentary thrill, and then you forget about it. So I think that's probably the worst. Uh, the worst thing about it. It's tempting to overbuy if there is like a um, 10 for a dollar or there's everything is just so cheap and there's like 20 different colors and things are 75% off. You might buy one of every color or even two of every color, not considering how much you can really use up before it goes bad. So the overbuying problem, that's something that gets me, especially because I used to teach. So um, I would just not even think about it and buy everything up thinking I'm going to do a class, but not really... I don't know, almost forgetting that, oh, I don't teach in person much anymore, or um, now what project am I going to do with that? I've got all this stuff. Now I need to come up with a project for it. Um, you can, uh, this is, uh, you might not have the space to store all the things you're buying, so that's another thing you want to keep in mind. Where are you going to put it when you get that big bag of goodies home? Where's it going to go? And the other thing that is what gets me every time I am fall victim to this all the time is making up a project to justify the things you want to buy. So I got a basket here. I bought these things and I put them right in a basket when I got home because I knew I was going to forget why I bought them. Um, there was a clearance and there was some fabric ink. And so I thought, well, I had been thinking about making some reusable produce bags. So I can't possibly just make reusable produce bags. I got to buy fabric ink and then some cute little fabrics, uh, fruit stamps on clearance so I can decorate these bags. Of course, I already had some fruit stamps at home, so I'll put those in my little thing too. So I got 10 different colors of fabric ink because they were on clearance for $1.24 a piece. And oh, then I got some black fabric markers because I'm probably going to want to write vegetables on my produce bags because clearly I won't be able to remember what these old bags are for. You know you can buy produce bags at the grocery store now. You can get like a set of six of them for like ten bucks. Ridiculous. So I put all of these pro all of these supplies that I bought and things I had on hand with some muslin fabric into this bin last August when I found that fabulous deal on fabric ink and I have not touched them. I have really had no desire to sew up those little fabric bags and now it's just kind of like a burden on my shoulders because I'm feeling bad because I bought all those stupid ink pads and I haven't even made the project yet and every time I go to the grocery store and I have to get one of those little flimsy plastic bags for my produce I'm thinking why? Why? And then I'm seeing the ones I could just buy for like ten dollars already made. They're probably with way less than this muslin fabric that I was going to use for the project 
and so it would cost me less in the long run as I'm um, buying my produce because I wouldn't have the weight of the muslin bag. Anyway, I made up that stinking project so I could use the stinking ink pads because I had to buy them because they were 75% off and I couldn't just leave them at the store. I couldn't store them at the store because they will be gone next time. So that's where the clearance one gets me. It's like, well, if I don't get it, then I'll never be able to get it again because they're clearancing this because nobody wants it. And yet I have to buy it. So uh, d please let me know in the comments below if I am not the only one that has this this uh, clearance buying neurosis. I should just stay out of the stores because if I didn't know it existed, if I didn't know it was there so cheap, I would be just fine. You know, ignorance is bliss, as they say. What did I have more? I gotta look back at my phone again. I've already gone on a tangent. Sorry about that, guys. Man. Um. So okay. So let's talk about when you should buy these uh, really cheap products. Uh, uh, products on clearance. So if it was something that you were going to buy anyway, absolutely. Why why wait and pay full price if it's if you know it's something you want and you were going to buy it anyway, if you got the money, um yeah, yeah, go ahead, buy it. Um if it's something that you know you're going to use up, like maybe you've got half a bottle of tacky glue at home and there's a a bottle for 75% off and you know you're going to get to it before it goes bad. Uh sure, yeah, get that bottle. That makes total sense cuz it's something that you use regularly cuz a lot of times uh stores clearance stuff clearance stuff because they don't want it to go bad so they'll um clearance stuff in time that it can be purchased and used before it would like you know get you know, before it get gross uh for a dry up before all that stuff so um a lot of stores do that um, if it's something that you're truly excited to try, you, you knew about it, you've been thinking about it, you thought, oh, if I got a chance to try that, I'd love to try it, um, but maybe you didn't want to pay full price because you're not sure if you're going to like it. If it's something you've thought about before you actually saw it on clearance, something you were aware of and you were excited about, then absolutely. I get in trouble when I learn about something when I see it on clearance uh, because it's like, if I never knew that existed, if I hadn't walked into the store today, I would not have been tempted to buy it. I wouldn't even know about it, you know? So if it's something you already knew about and you're excited, yeah, why not? Um, if it's a backup for a tool you use all the time and it would be a hardship to go without. So um, I actually did buy a backup manual die cutter at one point. Um, I bought it actually because it was uh, it was a letterpress kit. It had the die cutter, the letterpress kit, a couple sets of dies and a couple sets of letterpress plates. And I had made a DIY letterpress thing, but I was really curious if a store-bought one would be better and it was on clearance for 40 bucks and it came with a die cutter. And I figured for that, I have an extra one I can lend out. I have one, a smaller one I can take to classes and I've got a backup for my big shot dies. My big shot's about, uh, I think it's about 13 or 14 years old. It's the original Ellison one and it's still going strong. Uh, it's lost a little pressure in the center, but you know, it cuts everything I need to cut. But if that like broke and I was in the middle of a project, I would not want to run out to a store and pay full price for that. So I, I think it's worth storing that, um, that machine in the event that I need it. And I've, I've lent it out to friends before who don't have one. So it's definitely come in handy and been used. So yeah, that was definitely a good thing to buy in clearance, which I did. I was at AC Moore a few, uh, many years ago. Actually, I probably got that about eight years ago um, because I was thinking, oh, my big shot's gonna die any time now. I use that thing every day. It's still going strong. I don't think they make them like they used to though because I'm hearing, I hear some bad stories about them. But uh, used, they used to be really fantastic. You see the old teal one and then grab it. Um, if you craft away from home a lot and you need a duplicate for your travel bag because it's, you know, you craft away from home so often that it makes sense for you to have a travel bag with like an extra paper trimmer, scissors and supplies and things like that. I used to craft um, at least away from home at least once a week so it made sense to keep a bag ready so I could just grab that bag and go out the door and I wouldn't have to pack up and unpack my stuff I use every day. Uh, if you teach and you need duplicates for a class. That's a great time to buy it on clearance because why pay more if you can just, if you can get it for less. If it's something you're gonna use anyway and would probably need to buy anyway, or it will make your life a lot easier to have an extra one. Um, or uh, the last thing would be for a gift. If you know, uh, if you're buying a gift for a specific person, and this is another reason where I've gotten in trouble before, not with craft supplies, but with like buying in general, I would go to, um, well, this is a store we have in Maine called Rennie's, and I would see things that I thought were fantastic, and I would buy a bunch of them thinking I'm gonna, you know, wrap these up for Christmas presents, and then um, when Christmas rolls around, I completely forgot who I had in mind when I picked these things up, or it didn't really suit the people that I had to buy. They were great gifts, but they didn't suit any of the people that I was buying for, and then they just kind of sit in a box of random gifts to be given away. And it's like, you know, if I'm getting a gift for somebody, then I should definitely have, at least have them in mind when I'm picking it out. And, um, you know, then 
then give it to them. Follow through with that. So if you see something that you know a friend of yours would love, they've talked about it, or you just think it would really suit them, and you buy it, and you, you, you know, wrap it up, put that person's name on it so you know who it's going to go to, that's a great reason to buy some art supplies on clearance. Um, but if you're just buying it because it might be nice to have for a gift in the future, unless it's like, you know, a kid's art kit, kit and you just want to have a few gifts on hand because, you know, your kids will tell you a day before a party that, you know, oh, Susie's having a birthday party, can I go? And then you're like, oh, I gotta go to the store. Well, yeah, for kids' gifts, I definitely would recommend having a few, like, art kits like that around because um, those are really handy to save you a trip to the store before a um, before a party, especially if it's a kid you don't really know very well. But if it's for, like, a, a close friend, if you know it's something they want um, or they would really use, then, yeah, that's that's great because then you can get more for your for your buck. You can, you know, instead of maybe getting one small thing, you can get, you know, four or five things. So that's nice. Uh, but specific, specificity is the key there. Make sure you're buying it for a specific person, a specific project. Um, you have a specific need or specific reason to use it. Not like you're making up a chore, you're not buying that, so you're making up a chore for something you might not even actually want to do, but you're just trying to give yourself an excuse to get it because you want to get something. Um, or just because you are you just don't want to leave it behind for whatever reason. I don't know. I think we have these, like, these monkey mind, lizard brain, like, things that just make us want to hunt and gather and collect. And I think that's what that was. That's what that project was right there. That was the lizard brain. The liz I blame the lizard brain on this purchase. Oh, I really should do that project, but uh, I don't really want to. I should just put those supplies away. Maybe I'll feel the urge to stamp fabric at some point. Fa stamping fabric! Like, how often do I ever do a fabric craft? This is so insane. I don't even know what I was thinking. The ink pads are probably dry, actually. Probably try them. They'll probably be dry because I bought them six months ago, and they're probably on their last, you know, best used by cycle right then. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> the other thing I would tell you to avoid, um, and probably just avoid walking into a store so you're not tempted, is that if you have to put these clearance items, these 75% off clearance items on a credit card, I would not buy them. Because you may think, well, I'll never get a deal like this. I can't afford to pay full price. I'm going to put these on a credit card. But by the time you're done paying off that credit card, you may be paying full price for those items, and they might not be what you really wanted. So that would be another reason. If you don't have cash to pay for it right now, I would definitely leave it, leave it behind. Store it at the store, as they say, because more deals will come along. Um, it's not a one-time ever that you'll get to find things like this. There's always deals. There's always things coming up. And Something else I've realized, you know, especially when I did my declutter a couple years ago, I have a video on that. It's one of my most popular videos on my channel, um, where I con married my entire craft room, is that you look at some of the things you bought on clearance because they were cheap, or you bought in bulk because you thought you were going to use them up, and if you took all of those items um, and added them up, you could have probably bought the things that you really wanted, that you were kind of settling for a lesser quality or so you could get more of. If you had just bought the higher quality thing to begin with, um, you definitely would have probably saved money from all the smaller things that you ended up buying to kind of fill that gap. Um, and then you could have had what you really wanted and been satisfied with it earlier. So that's another thing I see a lot of times is that, um, myself included, uh, but a lot of people to try to save some money, they'll buy not exactly what they want, they'll buy more stuff of a lesser quality or they'll um, they'll settle for something that's not really what they want and and with all the different trial and error things they get to achieve the um, the technique they're trying to achieve or the look they're trying to get they would have they've spent enough that they could have just bought the first thing they wanted um, that would have done the job and it would have saved them money in the long run and they would have had less frustrating results and they would have had to do less trial and error um, but and that's one of the reasons why I like to do a lot of reviews on my channel is so that if you're wondering was this as good as Copics or could I get by with getting this instead of that you'll know you'll see you'll like what exactly things can do and what they can and when it's better to um, to save or splurge and that that decision is completely individualized to all of us um, one person could like, you know, one brand of markers just as well as Copics. Another person might be like, nope, I don't even want to use them unless I have Copics. And it's good you know that because you'll spend less money just getting the uh, supply that will suit your needs right off the bat rather than experimenting and trying to um, get by with not what's not quite going to make you happy, I guess. Eh, I don't know. Um, but there you have it. Uh, the dangers of shopping arts and crafts clearance supplies. Thank you so much for watching. I know these Ramley videos aren't aren't some people's favorites, but they are. A, a lot of people say they really enjoy them. So um, thank you for watching to the end. Until next time, happy crafting.